Hello, thanks for joining me. My name is Lindsay Dixon and I'm a pharmacist out of British Columbia, Canada. Today we will be discussing the AstraZeneca vaccine. I'm going to share a great video that explains exactly how this vaccine was produced. I would encourage you to stick around. So what do we know about this vaccine? This vaccine is based on a adenovirus. It is not mRNA technology like the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. This vaccine is based on a weakened adenovirus that they have genetically modified to contain the genetic information for the SARS-CoV-2 antigen spike protein. So how does this work? Approaches to vaccine development to prime the body's immune response to COVID-19 include using weakened viruses or viral proteins or using specific viral genetic code, either DNA or RNA directly, or creating viral vectors with specific viral genetic code. A COVID-19 adenoviral vector vaccine is an adenovirus vector based on a common cold that has been modified and inserted with the genetic material for the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Production starts with assembly of its genetic code. The adenovirus vector is engineered from adenovirus DNA by removing essential genes to stop it being able to replicate so it can only act as a carrier and not cause disease. Adding the coronavirus spike protein DNA creates the full genetic sequence for the adenoviral vector vaccine. The genetic code is introduced into a producer cell, where it is transcribed and translated to form the COVID-19 adenoviral vector vaccine. The human cell line is engineered to contain the missing adenovirus genes so that when the vector vaccine is introduced, it can infect the cells and use the cell machinery and missing viral genes to be able to replicate, producing identical copies. Vaccine molecules are also replicated with the division of the cells and the process continues until the right concentration is reached. The addition of a chemical lyses the cells, bursting them open and the vector vaccine is harvested, ready to be further tested, filtered and purified before being filled into vials. The vaccine with the viral vector is injected into the deltoid muscle. From this point, it gains access to the cell where it crosses into the cell cytoplasm and eventually reaches the nucleus where the genetic information that codes for the spike protein is processed. The DNA from the vector is processed by the cell's machinery and the cell expresses the spike protein. Once the protein is presented on the outside of the cell, we know this as an antigen presenting cell. This will be recognized by the immune system and stimulate a protective response that we call immunity. One of the advantages of this vaccine is that it is also stable in the fridge and it actually is a lot cheaper to produce than the other two vaccines. AstraZeneca has told us that they will be producing this vaccine at cost, so they will not be making a profit in producing this vaccine. And I really like that as well. So let's look at what we know about the study so far. The study is interesting. It includes 23,000 people from the UK and from Brazil. And they gave different doses to different groups of people. Clinical trials for the AstraZeneca vaccine are also being conducted in the US, Japan, Russia, South Africa, Kenya, and Latin America. They hope to enroll up to 60,000 participants globally and plan to distribute 3 billion doses by the end of 2021. The study in the UK involved over 12,000 participants over the age of 18, including those with stable chronic disease. In Brazil, they had over 10,000 participants, all over 18, including those with stable chronic disease. 
All participants had blood samples drawn and clinical assessments for safety as well as immune response. Suspected cases with symptoms were tested for virological confirmation by COVID-19 PCR. Three billion doses. That's huge. They actually also have a plan as to how they will be manufacturing and distributing these doses worldwide. And it's really interesting to see that and you can look that up on their website. So the results of this study are quite interesting. Those who received half a dose and then a second dose, which was a full dose, showed 90% efficacy. Those that received a full dose and a full dose showed around 62% efficacy. AstraZeneca also released that they have seen no serious adverse effects, no hospitalizations, and they analyzed about 131 COVID-19 cases in their study. It's also interesting in that AstraZeneca did not use a placebo to test their vaccine against. They actually used a meningococcal vaccine. And so that was a different approach. So the details of that are as follows. The UK trial used one or two full or half doses of vaccine trialed against the meningococcal vaccine, whereas the Brazil trial used two full doses of the vaccine and used the meningococcal vaccine as the first dose and a saline placebo as the second. We have data on two different dosing regimens, but we don't know which dose they plan to use or if they plan to use both. We are seeing vaccines made in real time. And I know that has some of us feeling a little bit uneasy, but please be assured that these companies are not allowed to skip steps, but the process has been accelerated because they have not had to wait around for approvals and they've been solely focused on making these vaccines. But this is all very encouraging. Diversity and having different vaccines that are available are very important. As time goes on, we will start to learn that a certain vaccine may be more effective in a certain population and other vaccines maybe not as much. Thank you so much. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.